up, H N? Um, I ran up just a little bit too early there. I didn't know if my video was gonna play, out, but it played, and I hope you guys liked that video. If you guys have seen them before, that's me. I'm known for my epic one shots. And I want before I start this off, I do want to give a big shout out to the Asian Hustle Network. Uh, I would think I was like the first hundred. Shout out to Maggie bringing me in, and then Brian growing this network to what it is today. And this is pre me doing the epic one shots. So one question I want to ask you guys is, uh, who here wants to learn how to gain a million followers? Anybody? Anybody? Come on, come on. I know a million isn't that much, but I mean, that's like the size of San Jose. Come on. Who here wants to gain a million followers? There we go. That's what I'm talking about. So I'm going to tell you guys some of my habits that I use to kind of get there. And as Eric mentioned before, I do have six times that. But, you know, I'm going to help you guys get up to uh, a million followers. And that will help you guys in what you guys are doing in your businesses uh, because that's what I use for my businesses. As Eric has mentioned, I was running about five, biz five businesses before I started hopping on to this um, social media thing and gaining all these things, uh, followers and whatnot. Uh, but before I get there, I got to tell you how uh, I kind of started, like, a little bit about my background, right, on how um, it kind of shaped these hustling habits, right? Because you have to have a certain habit to kind of get to where you're at because I'm no one special. I'm not doing anything exciting or fun or, like, something different. Nothing that does that goes viral, right, for, like, no reason, right? So there has to be a habit that kind of goes into it and helps you develop that, that, uh, that trait to help gain these loyalty of these followers, right? So looking back at my past, a little bit about my background, I'm not a techie, but I do consider myself a technical guy by default just because I'm a millennial. And by that, I mean we grew up in the age of, like, the box computers, you know, where we had to figure out, you know, taking things in and out, how to make things faster and stuff like that. And we grew up in, like, the Internet of Things where, like, I know we had AOL or, like, AIM and stuff like that. We were always trying to figure out ways to make our chat boxes look cool, capitalized, uncapitalized, you know what I mean? Um, I know because we are in the Asian Hustle Network, I know a lot of you guys had the screen names with AZN in it. Right? I mean, like, mine was like AZN Baby Boy 209 or something like that. <laughs> but we had to learn, though. We were in these chat rooms, and we were always trying to figure these things out. Because unlike the Gen Z of this generation, no offense to you guys, you guys have it kind of easy. But we had to figure these things out. We had these Zangas, these MySpaces, and all these. We had to figure out how to code this stuff to make our stuff look cool. We didn't have templates like you guys do. But we are, we had to figure these things out, right? We had to learn these things. So like I said, I'm not a techie, but I like to consider myself a technical guy by default, uh, millennial. So as a first generation Asian American, right, we hardly ever get to see our parents because every time we do, we see them busting their ass off for us, right? Because they had no other choice. Most of them didn't have nine to fives. They just had to work, get whatever jobs they could get just to kind of support us growing up. And uh, us as kids, Obviously, we're little kids, we can't do much. But we always think about how do we ease the financial burden of our parents so we can help make their lives easier, right? So I think in that way, the way I was thinking it along a lot of my peers is like, okay, we got to hustle. Did we learn the power of the dollar, right? How hard our parents are willing to work for that dollar? So we have to learn how to do that. Maybe our parents didn't ask us to do that, but because we wanted to kind of, you know, make it easier on our parents, we, we learn, right? For me, for example, by the time I was in second grade, remember the schools used to have us selling these chocolate bars for a dollar? But we knew that we could get it for a quarter at the store, you know what I mean? But they had us hustle it <laughs> for a dollar, you know? So in my thinking, I was like, you know what? I could do the same thing, right? But I, I didn't really have too much access to, like, Costco and stuff like that. But I did have access to the Asian store, right? So I remember. You guys remember those mama noodles, those silver bags, right? We used to, like, break them all up, crunch it up, put the sauce in it, eat it like chips, right? Yeah. I remember. I was like, you know what? This shit costs 10 cents at the Asian store. I go to school. I'll flip it for, like, 50 cents, 
You know what I mean? That's what I did. I made a killing. I had the whole mama noodle market at school to myself. Sometimes I would make like $10. And $10 to a, you know, eight-year-old in like 1994 or something like that was like a lot of money. So that kind of started my hustling ways, right? And then kind of morphed, evolved, you know what I mean, to like, you know, bigger and better hustles, you know what I mean? And, you know, to the, to the point where like, you know what? This is what hustling is, you know what I mean? We have to do what we can to climb to get to where we get. But at the same time, America tells us your dream, the American dream, is to go to school, graduate from college, get a job, work your way up the corporate ladder, buy a house, have a family, and boom, right? I believed it, because my parents told me to believe it, so I believed it. I was like, you know what? I am going to hustle only so that I could afford to get myself into school and get to all this stuff like that, right? So I did. I went to school. I graduated. Two degrees, bachelor's, great GPA, no job. Why? Why? So flat on my face. I had nothing, right? Moved to San Jose with nothing. By the way, I'm from the city of Stockton, by the way. So it's, uh, you know, the world's greatest city, just FYI. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, uh, back to what I was saying is that, you know, when, when when no one wants to give you an opportunity, which I felt like, why am I not qualified? I had all this stuff going for me in college. I was in a fraternity. I was doing 3.8 GPA. I was, you know, president of this bar business club and stuff like that. You know, I was like, it can't be because I'm Asian, right? Nah, 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 nah that can't be it. Maybe I just suck. Yeah, they're all right, you know, uh, these, these jobs, they, they, I get it. I, my demeanor sucks, right? They're not going to hire me. So I tried for two years straight, nonstop. I was running around a room out from a trailer home about like 80K in debt, right? I was like, okay, you know what? Someone's gonna hire me. Somebody, so, somebody. Uh, yeah, no, okay, another rejection, rejection, rejection. Uh, two years later, uh, still no job. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just go off on my own. So I started my own production company. Um, had a little camera in my hand, kept knocking at every door. Hey, guy, can you uh, hire me, please? Uh, no, okay, uh, okay. So I just kept trying, trying. You know what? No one's gonna hire me. So I just create, kept creating my own videos, right? Until. I made it worth valuable, right? Until somebody would hire me, give me a chance, and then boom, 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 boom. Next thing I know, I was able to move from a trailer home to a penthouse suite, right, in like three years. And that taught me one thing. If no one else is gonna give you the opportunity, you make the opportunity yourself. If they say you suck, maybe you do. But if you can convince another segment of people that you don't suck and they love you for what you do, focus on that. And that's what I did especially for social media, you know what I mean? Because when I first started doing the social media thing, 95% of the comments were saying, oh, you're trash, this shit sucks. Like, Ow. And then, but 5% was like, oh man, I love it, I love your work. I'm just imagining that's how they were reacting while I was reading it. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, so I decided, you know what? Fuck these haters. I am gonna focus on this 5% that love me, right? And you know, I, 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 I knew they loved me. You know, because they kept hitting me up, they kept, you know, I can't wait to hear, see you do more stuff, keep doing what you do. And then, you guys read comments, don't you guys? You know, they tell me, keep doing what you do. When they say that, that means they're reading the other comments of them hating on me. And I'll tell you guys this. Most of the hate will come back from your own community. You know, and I do respond back to all the hate comments. I do. And, you know, I troll a lot of them, or I'll be like, why? That sucks, or whatever. But 10% will come back and message me. It's like, yo, my bad, I'm having a, I was having a bad day, blah, blah, blah. So it works. You know, just kind of just engaging. I, I love engaging with all of my comments. And if you guys ever randomly hop onto one of my videos, I get like three to 500 comments a video, and I try to engage with every single person. Right, good or bad. So I decided to turn that 5% that people that love me into 95%, right? And look, when I first started, of course, like anyone that starts, right? We have like one follower, right? Hey, you, so, hey, hey, you call your friend like, yo, can you follow me, bro? Uh, I, I didn't start off with like one. Hey, hey, can you drop me a comment though? Just so like, you know, someone knows that they're watching, you know what I mean? So we do that, right? I did it, you know? So I got the 10 followers, all right, cool. Nine people hate on me, one likes me. All right, cool, I'm gonna focus on that one person. Hey, what do you like about it, bro? 
Uh, okay, it's telling me. Okay, now get it up, get it up, get it up. Okay, cool. Now I have six million followers, right? And every time a major news organization publishes me, right? Uh, still, because most people don't know who I am, but 95% are hate comments again, which is fine, right? It gets me down, but who am I gonna believe? You know what I mean? These people that really, really hate me, or that 5% that really loves me, right? And I could, I, I, I really decided to focus on that 5% because now I could count people such as, you know, uh, Serena Williams that you just saw in my video, you know, she just hit me up, and she was like, yo, Drex, I love your videos, let's go do some shit together. I'm like, uh, okay, I'm there. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, and, and, a, and a bunch of other like A-listers, you know, a bunch of huge celebrities that I never thought I would ever meet, and they're just all hitting me up. They're like, Drex, and then, the one thing I always talk to them about is about the haters. That's the one thing we all have in common, right? It's about the haters. But like, Fat Man Scoop told me, you gotta, I don't know if you guys remember him, but he was like, you know what? If, if people aren't hating on you, then you ain't threading the needle. Whatever that means, like threading, I, I don't know. I don't sell. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I guess what I'm trying to say is that be unique, be different, don't be afraid to be a little different. As you guys seen in my videos, who the hell makes a professional video like that? I don't know anyone like that. Uh, who ever thought that they would need a big professional camera to make these moves? Sure, I used to use big professional, I still have all those cameras. They make for a nice backdrop in my room, but <laughs> they're just collecting dust. Because what I use now? Just my phone. But as you guys seen in all of your favorite creators, right, all of your favorite creators that you see on social media, they all have something very different about them. They're not afraid to be different. And you might look at that video and be like, what are you guys doing? The heck? But they have millions of followers because somebody loves them. You know what I mean? Somebody loves what they're doing and they inspire them. Just like what I do on my phone. You know, you guys might be looking at my videos and be like, uh, okay, what's he doing? But I guarantee you, the people that follow me, this is what they're thinking. Wow, he just makes it with a phone. I have a phone. If he could do something special with it, so can I. And I like to think of it this way. Your phone is like a paintbrush, and the video you make with it is the art piece, right? It's up to you on what you want to paint. So, you know, when I say going back to how you guys could gain a million followers, right? Uh, be different, be who you want to be, and love yourself for doing it because there's going to be a lot of haters, but at the same time, do it because you love it. Don't do it because you think, you know what, I'm going to get hella motherfucking views from this shit, or I'm going to get hella followers. Eh, I mean, you could think like that, but you're going to stress yourself out because the moment a video bombs, you're like, oh, God, ah, God, this is depressing. Do it for yourself, you know what I mean? Do it for yourself, and sure, there's this app called TikTok, and it's blowing up. I mean, you guys heard of it. But like my, I remember a year and a half ago, my friend was telling me, bro, Drex, you gotta hop on this TikTok thing. I was like, bro, we're in our 30s, man. Isn't that even some kids? He's like, yeah, yeah, but bro, if you don't learn it, I'm telling you, man, someone else is gonna take your job. I'm like, bro, you might be right. And I, I was like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna try to hop on this thing where like all these kids are on, I guess, cause you know, uh, and, and, and I did. And you know, everyone said, yo, Drex, you just gotta do it, just try it out, and you'll blow up. I'm like, ah, uh, okay. So I did, right? And if you guys are hesitating about jumping on this platform called TikTok or any other platform that comes out, uh, don't. Because it's never too late to start to hop on anything. Like, for example, by watching my videos, you guys must be thinking, yo, Drex, do you do martial arts? Do you like, you know, do all these crazy, do you do parkour? I don't do any of that shit. You know what I mean? I just learned it how to do, for just for the video, you know? I did my first backflip at age 34. Well, you guys, if you guys, I don't know, if I, can, I don't know, but I did it. I practiced it and I did it. So it's never too late to start. Um, you guys seen seen the social, so I want to put it this way, right? You guys all heard this before. It's uh, the best time to plant a tree was ten years ago. The next best time is right now, right? Everyone walks their own walk. Everyone walks their own pace. Who cares if that thirteen-year-old is like? killing it on social media. Probably does a million dollars a year on YouTube or whatever like that, right? 
and then you're probably looking like, oh, he's about to too late for me. Nah. You ask, if you ask someone that's like, even like 50 years old right now, hey, bro, would you like to make, you know, $5 million? Like, yeah, of course. It's never too late to start. You are killing it right now. And bringing it back to kind of like um, where uh, I'm coming from, right? The film space. Back to about, I don't know what industry you guys are in. You guys are probably in a hell of a different industry. But if you guys decide to hop on social media and decide to grow your following, whether it's for yourself or your business or whatever like that, just remember, if you are going to start killing it, you're going to start getting a lot of hate. And you guys have to learn how to deal with that. But <laughs> that's the best part. I think uh, I was listening earlier to the other TikTok star, Leander Dong, talking earlier. And she was talking about hate comments. I was like, yo, you are so right. And, you know, it's, uh, it's always my own community. And I was talking to my buddy, uh, Serena, about this. Uh, <laughs> I had to. I had to. I was like, yo, do people hate you? She's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hated her. Competitors, fans of her competitors. I hated her. Always waiting for their downfall. You know what I mean? And you know what? It's okay. Sooner or later it'll come around. Turn your haters into lovers. Cool? You know what I mean? Wait a minute. Who writes the checks? Do they hate you? Oh, they don't. They write you the big checks. I like it. I'll take that. I'll take that fat check anytime. But going back to how you, you, uh, you, you have to think about it this way, right? Everything you do to, uh, in your habits, right? You have to think, how is it going to make me happy? You got to remember who your competition is, right? Your competition isn't the person next to you. It isn't the person across from you. It isn't me. Uh, <laughs> unless you can do that. <laughs> it is yourself. How do you become a better person than you were yesterday? You know? And by doing that, you will always become better and better because I think having a rival that is not you really um, diminishes you as a person, in my opinion. But if you go against yourself, then you will, then the only way to go is up. And you will never be depressed, you know? And my whole thing is about how to become always perpetually happy. And like Eric said, I did have five businesses before. I closed a bunch of them down. And one of the big reasons why was because I did take on too much myself, you know? But I'm, but I'm working more now than I have ever before. And Eric was saying, how the hell does he have time for this? Um, well, you got to look at time as something that you can never get back. So you have to utilize every moment of time that you have. Because you can always make money. Money just comes and goes. But time, right? Every time that you spend just you know, scrolling through the internet, reading some news or whatever, some stuff that you don't really care about, but you're just looking anyways because you're bored, uh, or just finding an excuse to get away from your actual work, um, use it to uh, 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 utilize every moment of time that you have. So that's what I did. And that's how I was able to run so many businesses at once. And tell you guys what kind of businesses I ran. I was doing my film business, right? I, had, I was producing about 20 pieces of content a week for my clients. And I was running uh, my nightclubs. If you guys, had, who, who, who here has been to one of my parties? I can't see his hands. Can you make some noise? Just real quick. Yeah, you guys remember those times, right? Yeah, those, those days are over. Uh, <laughs> and then I also had a boba shop. I had a pokey shop, a gym, a hit studio, right? All the meanwhile, jump starting a social media ad agency. We helped over, open over 300 Orange Theory fitnesses. I also started doing a, working on ca uh, political campaigns and stuff like that. And th that sounds like a lot, right, <laughs> for any given point in time. But being able to utilize that time and being happy while doing it because I loved what I did. And all of us as entrepreneurs, I know that we all want to get there to where we love doing what we do and be able to utilize every moment of it. You know what I mean? And not look at anything like work. So 
Um, I just want you guys to keep that in mind, and that's kind of one of the uh, best advices I could give to anybody is to utilize each moment in time that you guys have. So um, with, with that, all that being said, I want to show you guys how I do my epic. The, the, wait, who here has actually seen my epic one shots? Okay, I can't see, but. Okay, I'm going to show you guys exactly how I make one, and then I'll tell you, and then I'll let you guys know what makes it so different from your typical video, okay? And then this is, this is along the lines of how I, uh, I want to just show you guys how that, that million followers developed, okay? So, oh, by the way, if I, uh, <laughs> if, I, if I stumbled a little bit, I'm sorry, or if I slurred a little bit, I just had a little too much, too much to drink. Uh, I'm just used to saying boom, and, and that's it, okay? So, um, I want to, I want to bring somebody up. Uh, preferably somebody with like a shiny head thing, and then uh, maybe some shiny boots, maybe some white and like uh, a flashy jacket. You know what I mean? Any, anybody like that out there? You know what I mean? If, if, you're, if you're dressed like that, can you come up? I, I, you know what I mean? I, I want to show these, this beautiful crowd here how I do an epic one shot. Oh, we actually have someone like that, huh? Oh, yeah! All right. This is going to be the epic one shot, okay? I, uh, I promised Maggie and Brian that I'm going to do an epic one shot on stage. And I'll tell you guys why it's so epic. All right, look cool. Can you look cooler, please? That's pretty cool, huh? You got, you, you, oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, go back, go back, okay, pose. No, no, yeah, yeah, just like that. All right, so. Can you stay there? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, don't move, don't move. Stay, stay still. Stay, stay very still. This is exactly what I said to Serena. And I was like, don't move. Just pretend like you're doing, you know what you're doing, because I don't know what I'm doing until it happens, right? What I usually like to do, I like to talk to the camera, like camera person, look at me. Where's the camera at? Right there. You guys, you guys, you guys seen a big, big screen? Okay. All right, so I'm gonna do an epic one shot for you guys on stage, and this is how I'm gonna do it, okay? I'm gonna take out my phone like this, because everyone has one in their pocket, and this is how you're gonna make art with it. Right screen, that's right camera, okay. <laughs> Are you ready for this? I am. So I'm not gonna hit you in the face, okay? I promise. Okay. I, 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 <laughs> so I, I, so I'm gonna throw my phone in your face, but I'm not gonna hit you with it. All right? That's what I say to everybody, okay? So check this out. This is how you guys get a million followers, bro. Go up. Boom. Swing it around. Beautiful. All right, can you zoom in on this? Whoa, back up. Whip it, whip it, whip it. Oh, jeez, did you see that? No. <laughs> oh, you want to play it again? I got you. Don't trip. All right, you ready for this? Okay, you got to play the music again. Sorry. Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Hold on. The wish would have sounded better like, if I did it correctly, but. So, I'll tell you, I'll dissect a little bit about that for you. I'm gonna dissect it real quick. Um, I basically show what I do in every single video. I show a story. It shows beginning, climax, and conclusion. And I think every time someone produces or uh, consumes a piece of content, they like to see that, right? They wanna be taken through a journey. So in every video, 
I do the, uh, the setup, which is what I do the behind the scenes, and I go back, and then, in, like in any video you guys watch, there's a beginning, right? There's a reveal shot. I go in like this, you don't know what you're seeing, and then you start to see her face. Oh, okay, that's what's going on. And I go up, pull back, then you see the whole subject. Then I move forward like this, then you see her face, that's the like, uh, climax, and then conclusion out. So when you consume that piece of content, you're thinking, okay, I just seen the whole story right there. Wow, what just happened? I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> right? So um, I think that um, with that being said, those are some of my habits of gaining a million followers and becoming, I guess, a, a social media person. So, yeah. If you guys have any questions, I would love to hear it. So, um, yeah, I see well, you. I we'll, take, we'll just take one question oh, okay. since no. uh, I'll come down and I, I need hand the mic over. Oh, okay. You got yeah. one question? You want, you want one question? Yeah, Rex? one. All right, who's, the, lo who's the lucky? Is there only one hand? It has to be the best question ever, okay? All right, here you go. Do you have an O snap on your phone? Oh, she's solid. I am an O snap crew, so I love it. Oh, that. yeah. <laughs> this prevents me from, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Hey, that's it right there. So um, I know that I kind of like sped through this, but, um, you know, I want to thank you guys. I hope you guys are inspired by, you know, uh, growing, you know what I mean, to this um, X amount of uh, following and whatnot. So, you know, and hope you guys are able to take it into your own hands and then push forward, follow your dreams. And like I said, I never had a job. So if, if I could do it, if some guy like me could do it, anybody could do it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Thank Drex. You Thank you for the awesome performance and our volunteer Callista as well. Another round of applause for Drexley here. Make sure you guys follow him on his TikTok account. Much love.